Hello everyone, welcome back to Case Studies with the BizDoc. This week, it's mergers and acquisitions, and I'm gonna do maybe three little case studies here to talk about why companies do mergers and acquisitions. And a lot of this was sparked by you, and thank you for writing in. People wanted to know, what's this rumor about Disney and Apple getting together? And why do sometimes things not happen? Like we hear about mergers and then they don't go down. Like a way back time, in one of my past case studies we talked about, Yahoo getting together with Microsoft and it didn't happen. And there's a lot of things, a lot of reasons for that, but what I thought I'd do is give you news you can use as you're growing your company or you're part of a company that's growing as to why do companies merge in the first place? Why do we get together? So this week, I hope I give you two things. One, what are the types of mergers and why? And then number two, some positive examples of mergers that worked as well as positive examples of mergers that didn't. All of that should help you fill your playbook for the future when it's time for you to talk about merging, whether you are merging with a company across the street or you built something big and you're merging with a global player. Let's go. First of all, it's growth. You wanna grow. And there's a couple different ways to grow. First, you could get more market share. An example of growing with more market share is when we saw wireless companies, the same kind of company, just two different brands selling you and me mobile phones, whether they're in the UK or in the United States, they get together and now they have more market share. Now that can have a downside for you and me and that's why the government usually looks very carefully when companies in the same industry are getting together because they want to be sure that we still have price competition and innovation. We don't suddenly have a monopoly that says, Here's your price, forget about it, because they've bought all the competitors. That's the downside of mergers of similars for growth. But nonetheless, it can be very positive. Maybe a couple bakeries in town get bought by the same owner, and so now he's got more locations, and he's, he's buying market share there, but could have benefits in the community. The other one is more products or technology. For instance, uh, way back in the day, you had a Nokia that made you know, mobile phones, they actually bought like a GPS company. Well, that's an example of more technology to go along with the mobile phone. They're not necessarily gonna have more mobile phone sales, they just hope that technology makes their mobile phones better and more differentiated, so guess what? It results in more sales because that additional technology or product helps the core product. So that's, but that's also a, a growth opportunity. Then, vertical integration. Vertical integration is when suppliers buy, uh, you, you buy a supplier. So let's say that you are really, really big and maybe you are Boeing and you make airplanes and there's a key supplier of some uh, parts for your airplanes and there's only a couple airplane makers in the world. So maybe you decide, I'm just gonna buy that supplier because I get cost benefits because the profit that that supplier was making when they sell the Boeing, Boeing now puts that in their pocket. So that's an example of vertical integration where you go and you, you buy a supplier. Then there's synergies. Now whenever I see the synergies, I go, hmm. Because sometimes CEOs get together in Wall Street and decide, hey, well, we'll merge and we'll do something here and there'll be all these interesting synergies coming out of it. And you, you, you'll see stock prices move and you see analysts sitting there going, Hmm, well let me have a drink and get back to you what I think of that. You know what that means? That means the market is suspicious. So when you hear the word synergy, and I challenge you to go Google mergers and acquisitions synergy, and you'll probably find some stories and some examples of, you know, it's why are they doing that? Well, a lot of times CEOs get in deal-making mode and moods, and they just go and do it. So let's talk about now, let's get into some examples of some positive mergers. T-Mobile and Metro PCS. Now that's here in the United States. This is T-Mobile USA buys Metro PCS. Metro PCS was selling to a lower end customer, a cash only customer, um, and a you know buy as you go plan, right? So you, I mean, you mean pay as you go plan. And that was Metro PCS. Whereas T-Mobile was selling to these customers. Well, when we put them together, there was network benefits because they both had networks they put together. And now, T-Mobile has a product, like a prepaid plan, a pay-as-you-go plan for these customers and also is selling to these customers. So once upon a time, T-Mobile didn't have really good plans for lower-end customers. Metro PCS was having trouble reaching up. So when they buy together, they get growth, market share, but the two products were a little dissimilar. But that's an example of something positive. So now T-Mobile merged together they have something for both parts of the market. 
Then there was rumors right now of Sirius and Pandora. Now, everybody with a newspaper or anybody with access to the internet can see that streaming music has had its issues and Pandora's had some profitability issues trying to figure life out uh, as you and me are paying or not paying for streaming music. Well, Sirius already bought XM because once upon a time there was two satellite providers here in the United States for satellite music that would be in your car um, or a, a satellite music device you would put in your home and later they made it available online so you could just turn on your computer if you had a satellite, uh, a Sirius satellite subscription in your car and then you could listen in your office because you're a paying customer. Well, Sirius and XM got together and that was technology, the satellites, it was also market share and now they're looking at Pandora. And that's an example of growth and power through market share. And what they're trying to find is cost benefits so they can finally make a profit on streaming music. And I think what they're thinking is with more customers, even if it's only this much profit per customer, because it's a tight, tough market, that that ultimately could mean that, guess what? Maybe you can make profit on the service. So that's Sirius and Pandora. Now let's look at another example of a rumor on the market, Apple and Disney. Now, why on earth would Apple and Disney merge? Well, there are some things by it. There's a couple analysts and people associated with the companies that pointed out Disney has always wanted stronger distribution for its content. Apple would give them that. They have a great amount of control with that iPhone store. Also, Disney owns ESPN. ESPN has had challenges lately. So Disney would love to kind of merge with someone that would give it strength in distribution. And Apple has long wanted an internet-based video platform. At least that's what people say, and that's what analysts say, and every now and then you hear Tim Cook alluding to it. So together, Apple would be buying Disney, and Apple's got about $200 million offshore, and everybody's saying this would be about a $237 billion transaction. Apple's got about $200 billion offshore that thanks to the current president, they might be able to bring that home uh, called repatriate the money back without paying a tax on it. Well, this would be a way to bring that money home, give it to Disney, and buy it. So there'd be a lot of things that are in the news, everything from our president and uh, companies bringing money from around the world, banks back to the U.S., to using that here. There would also be some debt involved. So nonetheless, Apple can definitely afford it. It's not like it's a, you know, a, a college graduate and they want to buy a Ferrari as their first car. No, no. Uh, this would be a merger that gives both of them some very, very interesting uh, opportunities to work together. And it's a little bit of vertical integration because Disney would be going up to the hardware and distribution side and Apple would be going to the content side. So, uh, you know, I think this is really, really interesting, especially as you see like Verizon and, you know, Time Warner and all of those acquisitions have been made there, which also leads me to Verizon, you know, buying Yahoo. There's a funny two-sided story here. Remember, once upon a time, Yahoo was offered $45 billion by Microsoft. Yes, Microsoft was out late drinking one night and actually offered $45 billion, I think that was the number, to go buy Yahoo. Can you imagine coming home? Hey, honey, it's been a long night. What did you do? I made an offer of $45 billion to buy Yahoo. You know what your wife would say? Damn! You know, sober up and think straight. Why would Microsoft buy Yahoo? Well, back in the day, Yahoo said, oh, we're worth $50 billion, and said no. That's an example of Microsoft should be praying to God and saying, thank you, this never happened. Because some years later, you know, Verizon buys Yahoo for $4.8 billion, and then discounted it because when they were in the middle of buying it, people found out that there was a data breach and everybody's uh, passwords or something for email were, were exposed by Yahoo. How embarrassing to have that happen where you're trying to get bought. So Verizon said, no, 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 I'm taking a discount on that. And Yahoo basically had no choice. It was a garage sale and they were just trying to sell the thing. Well, Verizon's also bought AOL, and now together, AOL and Yahoo, they're going to create a company called Oath. Now, Verizon bought both of those basically on sale. So who knows, but maybe buying both AOL and Yahoo cheap, renaming it Oath, maybe they do something that works out and is profitable. The guys at Verizon aren't dumb. So there's an example where you look back and maybe it's a big company buying table scraps that something interesting could happen with. 
So that's what we've got this week is that whether you're growing and you want market share or more products and technology or it's vertical integration buying kind of the supplier relationship or it's just like synergies, man, we're going to have synergies. There's a lot of reasons for mergers and acquisitions, and I think you can use all of this and store it in your mind as you think about your company that you're building or the one you work for. I need the pillow. Speaking of merging, maybe we should merge this pillow with another pillow and make a really cool pillow out of it. There'd be interesting synergies there. Anyway, I'm Tom Ellsworth. Thank you for watching Valuetainment, the best channel on the internet for entrepreneurial content. I'll see you next time, and until then, I hope I left you better than I found you.